إن الحمد لله نحمده نستعينه ونستغفره ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا بين يدي الساء من يتع الله ورسوله فقد رشد ومن يعسهما فلا يضر إلا نفسه أما بعد فعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون وقال عز وجل واعتصموا بحبل الله جميعا ولا تفرقوا واذكروا نعمة الله عليكم إذ كنتم أعداء فألف بين قلوبكم إلى آخر الآية وقال عز وجل أفحسب الناس أن يقولوا آمنا وهم لا يفترون رب اشرح لي صدري ويسل لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفكه قولي اللهم أرنا الحق حق مذكنا الطباء وأرنا الباطل باطلا مذكنا اجتنابا أمين Today I'm going to talk about something that has to do with going back to the basics In three places in the Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala poses a question <coughs> In one place Allah says, أَفَحَسِبَ النَّاسَ أَنْ يَقُولُوا آمَنَّا Did people think, did people calculate that they will say, we believe, وَهُمْ لَا يُفْتَرُونَ and they will not be tested. Meaning there is a divine law that when you say, I believe, you are going to be tested. And this is something that we can't escape from as a community. <coughs> Divine tests will come and there's another, uh, another side to this. So one side is the tests. In the same way we find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah, Ya ayuhal ladhina amanu sta'inu bis sabri wa salah inna Allah ma'as sabirin Oh you people who believe, get help from Allah because there's no fa'il haqiqi there's no actual doer other than Allah fa'il haqiqi is Allah musabib al-asbab is Allah so get help from Allah wasta'inu bis sabri was salah with sabr and salah inna Allah ma'as sabirin and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wala taqulu lima yuqtalu fi sabilillahi amwat and don't say for the, the people that have died in the cause of Allah that they're dead. But But they're alive, you just don't perceive it. We will definitely, you know, the lam and the nun shadda of ta'kid. And Lam Shadda of Taqib. We will definitely test you with something of fear. This is for the Muslim community. And loss of, you can say, starvation. And from the decrease of your wealth. And even your fruits, the fruits of your work or Agriculture has, it can be metaphorical and literal. وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ So, give the good tidings for the people who have sabr. In the same way, the dua that was given to the Prophet ﷺ in, in Mi'raj. لَا يُكَلِّفُ اللَّهُ نَفْسًا إِلَّا وُسْعَهَا لَهَا مَا كَسَبَتْ وَعَلَيْهَا مَا كَسَبَتْ رَبَّنَا لَا تُؤَخِذْنَا إِنْ نَسِيْنَا أَوْ أَخْطَعْنَا I'll come to this later. رَبَّنَا وَلَا تَحْمِلْ عَلَيْنَا إِسْرًا كَمَا حَمَلْتَهُ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِنَا رَبَّنَا وَلَا تُحَمِّلْنَا مَا لَا طَاقَتْ لَنَا بِي Don't give us a burden like the people had before us. Actually, Isran doesn't only mean burden. You know when you make something complicated, 
Something is simple, but it becomes too complicated to solve. This is called burden. Isran is uh, a burden that is a burden because of its complication. It's not something easy. You've been put in a situation where you don't, you don't know this is right or this is right. This is Isran, or one of the meanings of Isran. So, in many places, this theme is repeated that you're going to be tested. Uh, so this is a reality for Muslims No matter, you know, we came to the U.S. Thinking we have escaped uh, The tests of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala But uh, as time goes on The reality begins to set in That no, we Now here is the test Either we will pass the test Or we will fail the test And what is the test? This is the question you know, on the one side, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, wal insa illa I have not created man or jinn except for it be in my obedience, into my loyalty. So this is the, the essence of what Islam wants. Wa oh Allah, we have become your servants and we seek your help to get the guidance to make the right decisions. And then, uh, so this is very clear that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will test us. But the question is, what is the test for Muslims in America? What is our test? What is the test? The test for Muslims in America is no different from the test of the Prophet ﷺ, at least in the beginning in Mecca. Which is what? It is our responsibility to introduce and to articulate the message of Islam to the non-Muslims. Not doing so will mean that we will be put in a state of ibtila. We will be put in a state of difficulty. This is very clear in the Quranic uh, Quranic uh, narrations, in the Quranic uh, themes. This is very clear. We Muslims have to be able to, number one, protect <coughs> the next generation. So this is the first uh, thing that we have to do, is to protect the next generation, make sure that the continuity of Islam within the 7 million Muslims, but actually it's practically speaking 2 million Muslims because the participation of Muslims in the Masajid is really 2 million, okay? And uh, so the continuity of the participation of the Muslims in the Masajids, they continue. Let me just say, Rabbi Shahmi Sadri wa I just wanted to do my du'a so that I'm able to uh, uh, articulate what I want to say properly. So the first responsibility is to protect our own. Ya anfusakum wa ahlikum nara. Oh, you people who believe, save yourselves and your family from the hellfire. This is the first responsibility. Second responsibility, which is not an individual responsibility, is a collective responsibility. And that is that you have to be able to articulate the message of Islam. وَجَاهِدُوا فِي اللَّهِ حَقَّ الْجِهَادِ هُوَ اجْتَبَاكُمْ وَمَا جَعَلَ عَلَيْكُمْ فِي الدِّينِ مِنْ حَرَجٍ مِنْ لَّا تَأْبِيكُمْ بِالْرَاهِيمِ هُوَ سَمَّاكُمْ الْمُسْلِمِينَ مِنْ قَبْلُ وَفِي هَذَا لِيَكُونَ الرَّسُولُ شَهِيدًا عَلَيْكُمْ You know there are many terms in Quran for da'wah. One word is da'wah. The other that's very interesting is shahadat al nas لِيَكُونَ رَسُولُ شَهِيدًا عَلَيْكُمْ The messenger will be a witness upon you and you will be a witness against humanity. That you've delivered the message. Not fulfilling this responsibility of da'wah has such consequences in which then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if we fulfill the responsibility we move towards izza, honor. If we do not fulfill this responsibility then the divine grip. And this is something very important to understand. Look, the former Muslim Ummah, just so that I, understand, I explain these very basic concepts. The former Muslim Ummah was said, Ya Bani Israel, uzkuru ni'mati allati namtu alaykum wa anni faddaltukum ala na'amin. Oh, you people of Bani Israel, they had the Torah. They were the custodians of the book of Allah. Torah. And Allah says, Oh, Bani Israel, inni faddaltukum ala na'amin. Oh, in this Ummah, you know it was an Ummah. The Ummah before us, came partly, and Allah talks about the Ummah before us, so that we as an Ummah, 
of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, we will learn the lessons of their mistakes. That the previous Ummah came, they made these mistakes. And the Prophet وسلم, said we would make all of their mistakes. If one of them went into a lizard's hole, the Prophet says, you will go into a lizard's hole. If one of them had an issue, uh, had intimacy with his mother, one of you will have intimacy with his mother. Wordings of the Prophet The Prophet said, All those things will come to pass in this ummah that came to pass in the previous ummah. And in fact, it is carbon copy. Bani Israel is 2,000 years. We're 1,500 years. The only difference will be you can say our shoe is a little bit shorter. We, our time span. The Prophet said one and a half days, which is about 1,500, 1,600 days. I'm not going to go into this right now. But what I'm mentioning here, in another hadith, the Prophet said the time span of Bani Israel was from Dhuhr to Asr, and ours will be from Asr to Maghrib. So this gives you a little bit of idea of the time span of this Ummah. Anyway, this is a separate subject that's very, very interesting. But what over here I want to emphasize that Ummah. That for which Allah says, Inni I chose you above and preferred you above all of mankind. Just like Allah said for us, You're the best of people taken out from mankind. Why? Because you, you uh, enjoin good and forbid evil and believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why you're the best. But that same Bani Israel now, Again, I don't want to take too much time, but you will find this a little bit interesting. Starting with Musa, starting with Prophet Muhammad The beginning is a little bit different. With Prophet Muhammad, you had the good followers. With Musa والسلام, they didn't have, uh, the Prophet Musa didn't get that response from his people that he was expecting. He even says, these, if you just understand this, you can feel this, like, yeah, yeah. وَإِذْ قَالَ مُوسَى لِقَوْمِهِ يَا بَنِي إِسْرَيْلِ إِنِّي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ إِلَيْكُمْ Oh my people, I'm a messenger to you. لِمَا تُؤْذُونَنِي Why are you hurting me? Why do you why are you bent upon not listening to me? Why are you hurting me? And this is uh, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks the Muslims. وَلَا تَكُونُ كَلَّ uh, Do not be like the people of Bani Israel, meaning to the companions of the Prophet In the beginning, you had Musa, and then you had a downfall. But then you had Sulema, Dawood, Suleiman, Suleiman's sons, and they had a rise. Okay? And in the same way, we had Khilafat al-Rashidah, we had a rise. But then after that, we had a downfall. They also had a downfall. This is a long history. But it's very, very interesting, but I can't go into it. But our situation has been basically the same as theirs. They were, we were first attacked from the north, from the Crusades. They were attacked from the, uh, the, uh, the Titus. Uh, from the north. The Tatars came from the east, uh, Titus uh, came from the east, the Assyrians came from the east. So they had a very similar, uh, you can say, uh, history of up and down. In their history, they had two rises and two, two falls. In our history also, so far we've had two rises and two downfalls. From the time of uh, Abu Bakr, Umar, Umayyad, Abbasid, then fell down, the Tatars came, then after that the Ottoman Empire came, then we had another fall. The reason for this, explaining all of this, the rise of the fall of the nations, uh, especially within the Muslim Ummah of Bani Israel, the Ummahs, the Ummatain, you can say, the two Ummahs. Why did nations fall and rise? Because of there's a divine law. There's a divine law, just like there's physical laws. There's a physical law that everything in nature that is in space is in spherical shape, is in a circular shape. Why? Why does everything in, or, or there's gravity. You pick something up, it falls. There's a divine law. There's a fixed divine law, the way everything works. Everything works in spherical shapes, whether it is atoms, whether it is cells, whether it is the, the spherical, also, you know, the duplex of the DNA is in, is in spherical. It's a, you know, because it, it, it's sphere, I, I'll exp it's in like a wavy shape. It's a spherical shape. Anyway, the point I'm trying to make, there's a, just like their physical laws, their divine laws, 
In the same way, there are divine laws for morality, for nations, and particularly for an ummah. When you claim to be an ummah, when you claim to be the custodian of the book of Allah, when you, can, when you claim that we are the representatives of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, then divine law will apply upon you. Regardless of where you are, who you are, what your situation is, eventually, eventually, divine law will catch up and make judgment on you, especially at the collective level. Like I said last time in Sutul Haqqa also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always judges nations in this life. Nations are judged in this life. Individuals are judged in the next life. There's a hadith, very famous hadith. Uh, Imam Nawi also quotes it in his Riyadh al-Saliheen. He says that there will be an army that will come to raid the Muslims. And this will be near Mecca, an area by Mecca. And the Prophet ﷺ said, but the, you know, when the army comes to attack the Muslims, something in the future, which again is a very interesting topic. But, uh, <coughs> so when this army comes, the Prophet ﷺ said, the earth will swallow up this army that will come in Arabia to attack what at that time he will be. The hadith doesn't say it, but the understanding of the scholars when they put all the traditions of the Prophet together is it's talking about the Mahdi. When the army comes, uh, uh, when the army comes, the earthquake will swallow up this army and this will be one of the signs that he's the Mahdi, by the way. Anyway, so I was saying that Aisha the Allah when she heard this hadith, she asked the Prophet but, uh, but there will be good people among them, won't there? I mean, this is near Mecca, so there will be good people amongst them. And the Prophet ﷺ answered, yes, there will be good people. But إِذَا كَثَرُوا خبث, When the khabath, when which is dirty, becomes more than what is good, what is evil becomes more than what is good, then these things will happen. And so the point is, nations, particularly the ummah of Prophet Muhammad ﷺ, rises and falls based upon its relationship with its responsibilities and divine judgment does come upon us. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala three times asks us, أَفَحَسِبَ النَّاسَ أَنْ يَقُولُوا آمَنَّا وَهُمْ لَا يُفْتَلُونَ Do people this think they will say they believe and they will not be tested? This is not possible. This is against the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that every ummah has to be tested. And so what is our job? Besides Qu Anfusakum Wahlikum Nara, which is your individual responsibility. We have two responsibilities at the collective level. Two responsibilities. They're not uh, they're not like some sunnah, they're not like sunnah prayers, they're not like umrah. These are Fargul Ain, Fargul Kafaya. Okay? They are Fargh. And in fact, some scholars say Fargul Kafaya is more important than Fargul Ain. A collective Fulfilling a collective responsibility is more important than fulfilling a individual responsibility. A fulfilling a responsibility on behalf of the Muslims is a bigger responsibility than fulfilling a responsibility on, on, on for yourself, according to many of the fuqaha, including, mind you, Imam Ghazali. For example, in his book, Ahiyya al Muddin, in the very first chapter, uh, which is the book of knowledge, he says, that it is Fardul Kafaya to have enough doctors in every city, in every Islamic city. This is Fardul Kafaya. You have to have enough uh, uh, Hakims, what they call, or Tabibs. Uh, you needed enough doctors in every city. This is a Fardul Kafaya. This is something a society needs. Therefore, it is Fardul Kafaya. You have to do it. So even these things, they become Fard upon us. Things like having enough, uh, enough money for the welfare of the people. Like I said, even in one of my khutbahs, that zakat you have to give, but the khalifa, if there is a khalifa, he can add more, he can charge more to fulfill the responsibilities of the state than even more than the zakat. He can ha charge a higher tax. So if, there, if the zakat is not completing the task, he can charge higher tax for completing the task of what the nation needs. Anyway, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala room, he says, uh, we will definitely test them, or we will give them, taste, you know, we will make them taste. This is a zaiqa, you know the word zaiqa? Taste, right? So, uh, we will make them taste a small punishment before a big punishment. Why? 
So they come back. What's the big punishment? The day of judgment. What's a small punishment? Small difficulties come in this life. Small difficulties come in this life and they make you think about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Difficulties and sufferings are one of the main things that bring people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts us in difficulties so that we will think, okay, we need to go back to Him. We need to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And turning to Him is what's toba. I don't know if many people uh, know what the word toba. What's the difference between istighfar and toba? Is toba means to turn. Toba means to turn. The one of the names of Allah is a tawab. If you turn to Him, He turns to you. Istighfar is a little bit more complicated, but istighfar is actually seeking forgiveness. Is actually seeking protection. Tawbah is to turn to Allah, which happens basically in the heart. Istighfar happens with the tongue. You seek something, you're asking for something. You seek istighfar with your tongue, you seek tawbah with your heart. So the intention, actually, let me uh, also clarify here. There is no difference between intention, niya and tawbah. Tawbah is niya. And becoming Muslim, becoming Muslim is tawbah. Becoming, taking the shahada is, is what? Taking to, uh, shahada is Muslim, and taking shahada is toba. It is turning to, towards Allah. Whatever you were before, you were you were Majus, uh, Nisrani, Yahud, whatever you were, now you're turning towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you say, Ashhadu wa la ilaha illallah. So toba, the biggest toba is conversion to Islam. The biggest toba is to convert to Islam. Anyway, this is a side note. The point I was making is that we as Muslims, in the world today. What do we need to do to get out of this divine grip? Because if you look at the Muslim world, it's not like things are just randomly happy. The Muslim world is in trouble, just randomly is in trouble. This is not how the Quran sees history. The way Quran sees history is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is responding to our actions. And so, especially if you are part of an ummah, and for that matter, especially if you're part of the Ummah of Prophet Muhammad So what are the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us? Two things. Number one, you have to articulate the message of Islam to the non-Muslims. See, another thing about prophethood of Prophet Muhammad The Prophet like any other Prophet before him other than Ibrahim, he was sent specifically to his people. The Prophet said, I have come to you, O Arabs, specifically. I've come to the Arabs specifically and to all of mankind in general. And what this means in the Quranic terminology, this means when you study the Quran, because Quran, when it said, look at the people before you that were destroyed, like Thamud and Ad and Fir'aun, Allah was saying, look, if Makkah doesn't believe in Prophet Muhammad, the same thing will happen to Makkah that would have that has happened to the people before. And in fact, after you know they got tired of hearing what the Prophet was saying, oh every day he's telling us, you know, this punishment's coming and the hour is coming and the day of judgment's coming, they started saying to Prophet Muhammad, okay, bring that punishment. Where is it? We want to see this punishment that you talk about. Where is this day of judgment? Where is this? punishment like the people before had. Why is it not coming to us? It's been 10 years. Anyway, that was one of the responses that they had. And this is why when the Prophet finally left Mecca and went to Ta'if as his looking for a new opportunity that maybe people here will listen to what I say. This is why when Jibreel came down, he said, if you want now, I will destroy the two nations. In fact, some of the narrations even say that Prophet Muhammad did ask Okay, Allah, I have been preaching them for 10 years. Now they're even saying and making fun of me that I have been telling them this punish, punishment's coming. Even, This ayah, one of the interpretations of this ayah, when the, ask, the caller asked for the punishment of Allah, is referring to the fact that Prophet Muhammad prayed for the destruction of Makkah. And then Allah said, no, wait, we have to give them more time. We have. But what happened? In Ta'if, like the Prophet said, maybe their children will accept Islam. Maybe their children will accept Islam. 
So eventually, Makkah accepted Islam, Ta'if accepted Islam, all of Arabia accepted Islam. Prophet Muhammad was sent to the Arabs specifically, but he was sent to all of mankind in general. Now, this is also mentioned in Quran. This is the hadith. I have been sent to you, O Arabs, specifically, and to all of mankind in general, but the Quran puts it in this way. It is Allah who sent a messenger to the Ummiyin, meaning the Arabs, the unlettered people. So the Arabs are the Ummiyin, the Prophet went to them. And then وَآخَرِينَ مِنْهُمْ لَمَّا يَلْحَقُوا بِهِمْ And then the others, besides the Arabs, who have not yet joined hands with them. When the Prophet was asked, who are these people that have not joined hands with us, that are part of our, that will be part of our Ummah, the Prophet ﷺ, according to the uh, Tafsir of Ibn Kathir, he put his hand on Salman bin Fasi and said, it is referring to his people, meaning the Ajam, the Ajam. وَآخَرِينَ مِنْهُمْ لَمَّا يَلْحَقُوا بِهِمْ وَهُوَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ ذَلِكَ فَضْلُ اللَّهِ يُؤْتِهِ مَنْ يَشَاءُ This is the fadl of Allah, he chooses whoever he wants, he chose the Arabs, that's fine. The point I'm trying to make is that number one responsibility is not is to be able to convey the message of Islam. And not to be like those people that this very surah, Jum'ah. The example of those people who were given the responsibility to carry the Torah, the previous Ummah. They were given the responsibility to carry the Book of Allah. They didn't carry it. There are examples like the donkey. It carries pages on a donkey that carries pages. A lot of load of pages, but they can't read it and nor act upon it. What an evil example for a people, for a nation that has made a lie of Allah. So this is what the Prophet will say. My people, they abandoned the Qur'an. And the point I'm trying to make here, the first responsibility is to convey the message of Islam. The second responsibility is, is we have to establish Islam. Islam as a living model for people to see. What does the political system of Islam look like? What does the economic system of Islam look like? What does the judicial system of, of Islam look like? What is the what does the, uh, the, uh, the, the social system of Islam look like? What does it look like to have a society that has no gambling? What does it look like to have a society in which uh, investments are made based upon profit sharing? Uh, let me just uh, give one example here and then I'll continue inshallah. And then I'll try to end on a positive note because I don't want it to be all negative because the prophets did come Bashira wa Nadira to give good tidings and bad tidings, uh, meaning good news and bad news. But I'm only mentioning that we are in America. We don't need to think that we have somehow escaped our responsibility being Muslims in America. We cannot escape our responsibilities from being Muslim. Divine punishment will catch up eventually. And uh, just on the economic note that I was mentioning, you know the Islamic... How, well, first of all, let's talk uh, about the political system of Islam. What is the political system of Islam? Just a few words on this. So that you, you, you see, we don't, and what I'm trying to convey here is that sometimes we don't even know our own deen. We think Islam is just praying, sayyam, fast, hajj. Bunya Islam wa Islam is built on these re individual responsibilities. But when I, ask a, when I ask a Muslim, forget about Muslim if I ask even some scholars, what does the Islamic political system look like? What are its bases? What are its foundations? A lot of scholars are not able to properly answer. Because it takes seven years just to go through the chapters of hadith of Tahara is the first chapter, then Salah, which is a very big chapter, and then after that, Sayyam and Nikah and Bayu, buying and selling, and then by that time, seven years are over. And the other chapters that come after that, we never even touch those in, in the, in, in the Madaris. Never even touch those. You hardly finish two volumes of Bukhari before seven years are over. Or uh, just the, the basic things, basically teaching you enough to be an Imam, and to answer some basic questions. But the Islamic political system is like this. And I'm not rebuking our scholars. There are some scholars that are very beautiful, 
very golden, much better than I am. But I'm just saying, as in, there is uh, a problem of being able to articulate what Islam is. Especially as a system, as a deen. And by the way, I want to mention, Islam is a deen, it is not a mazhab. Islam is not a religion. Islam is not a religion. Islam is a deen, it's a way of life. It's a system. See, I'll give you an example. Listen to this. You remember the story of Yusuf والسلام, where Yusuf wanted to keep his brother Binyamin with him and he couldn't. What does Allah say? مَا كَانَ يَأْخُذُ أَخَاهُ فِي دِينِ الْمَلِكِ He was not able to take his brother to himself in the law of the king. فِي دِينِ الْمَلِكِ مَا كَانَ يَأْخُذُ أَخَاهُ فِي دِينِ الْمَلِكِ The word here is deen. There's a law. The kingdom had a law. You can't just keep anybody with you. But then Yusuf والسلام, put those merchandise in the, in the bag of his brother so that he can then retain him and keep him with himself. Remember this? Because the law dictated, and the word for law is deen. The law dictated that only under these circumstances you can keep your brother with you. This is deen. Law. إِذَا جَاءَ نَصْرُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَتْحِ وَرَأَيْتَ النَّاسَ يَدْخُلُونَ فِي دِينِ اللَّهِ when the victory and the, the support of Allah and the victory comes, you will see the people entering into the deen of Allah. Deen of Allah. Deen, Maliki Yawm deen what does it mean? Maliki Yawm deen Master of the Day of Judgment. Why deen? Deen is judgment. There's laws. You will be judged based upon a law. This is deen. So when there is a deen, that is the laws that are applied in that society. When Islam is not being practiced as Islam, when Islam is not being practiced as Islam, Islam is not a deen at that time. It is a mazhab. It's a religion. But Islam wants to be practiced as a deen. What does the political system of Islam look like? Again, time is running out, so I'll just give this one, uh, just final remarks. Uh, actually, I'll finish this in my second talk. أحمده وأصلي على رسول الكريم أما بعد فعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب الشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وأهل الأخطة من لساني يحفظ قوتي إسلام has the idea of what we call theo democracy what is theo democracy there is some theo means religion theo is religion within the limits of the religion Within the limits of the Sharia, you can make any rule. If the Congress or the Parliament or what, because there are six forms of democracy, any of the forms of democracy you take. If 51% of the people say we will want gambling in our society, no. If 51% say we want alcohol, no. But anything other than what is not prohibited, you can do your ijtihad. You don't want red lights, you want blue lights, okay. You want your roads to look like this instead of your uh, roads to look like this, no problem. Even if your society wants to decide, we don't want to, we don't want to uh, you bring Walmart into our society because it'll eat up all the small businesses, for example. Okay, it's allowed. It's allowed. It is theod within the limits of the Sharia. You can have any laws, but not any law going against the Sharia. The political system of Islam demands. A, sovereignty is claimed for Allah. Sovereignty belongs to Allah. لِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ رَبُّ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ Jesus has a very good prayer in the Bible. Very beautiful. Thy will be done on earth as it is in the heavens. Thy will, meaning Allah, your will be done on earth as it is in the heavens. When Allah tells the angels to do something, they do it. No second question about it. Thy will be done on earth as it is in the heavens. This is the basis of the understanding of the basis of what we call khilafa. There is no sovereignty for us. We are trustees according to Islam. Lillahi mulku samawati wal ard. Sovereignty belongs only to Allah. Sovereignty, kingship only belongs to Allah. So 
the second responsibility again for the Muslims is we have to establish a society. And just as one small example, and then I will finish the Economic something about economic system. When we talk about interest and usury, one aspect of interest people don't understand that's actually very beautiful. We get stuck on the technical aspects of it, but when you look at the anatomy of what makes a interest-based system versus a shared-based system, one of the differences is, for example, if I own a house, if I own a house, and I pay my whatever I'm supposed to pay, the mortgage or the rent, whatever I'm paying, if I paid it for 10 years and then I lost my job, in the normal situation, they'll take my house away. If I paid out of 20 years, if I had to pay 20 years, if I paid 10 years, my house is taken away. In Islam, it doesn't work like that because it's, it, it's sharing, it's musharaka. You still owe 50% of that house because you paid 50% of that house. It's not like you have only a few months left and you weren't able to uh, make the payments and it goes into foreclosure. No, then the bank or the person, whoever, or some third party, they will sell the house if that's what it comes down to if the person can't pay. And then after selling the house, they will give you 50% of the proceeds and the bank will take 50% of the proceeds because it's based upon how much you're buying out your share. It's very beautiful, very beautiful concept. Then you don't have to worry, okay, you know, I'm going to lose everything. I'm going to lose $200,000 at the end because I lost a job after five years. You don't have to worry about that because the assets in that house are your assets. Anyway, so there are so many other beautiful things in Islam like this. For example, uh, just, uh, again, we don't have time. I'd like to talk about the judge and jury system and uh, how that works out uh, in terms of Islam. But Islam is a deen, Islam is a system. Islam has its own view of what a political system looks like, its own view of what a judicial system looks like, its own view of what an economic system looks like, a society with no gambling, a society with no alcohol, a society, so on and so forth. Imagine this, a society that has no prisons. In Islam we have jails, we don't have prisons. Judgments they made there and then. When somebody goes to prison in America, their record follows them and they can't get jobs. In Islam, if, you, if somebody paid for their crime, his hand has been cut off, let's say. And by the way, hands are cut off only for white-collar crime. Not for blue-collar crime. Hands are cut off for white-collar crime, not blue-collar crime. This is another important aspect. But what I'm trying to say is, whatever the punishment's given, he takes the punishment and that's it. It doesn't follow him in the record where he has to now suffer and he can't have jobs because if 30% of the African Americans are in jail, that means that 30% of the African Americans in this country can't, are having a hard time getting jobs because it's following their record. Now in some cases, of course, in certain types of abuses, it might be important to have that on record, but, uh, but it, otherwise for general stuff, no. We don't malign a person like that, that his record keeps following him everywhere like that. If he's paid his due, he was in jail for two years, and then you also keep it on his record. Anyway, so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us fulfill our responsibilities as Muslims. ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكن من الخاسرين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وكنا عذاب النار اللهم تجعل خلافة المسلمين في هذه الأرض اللهم تجعل خلافة المسلمين في هذه الأرض اللهم تجعل خلافة المسلمين في هذه الأرض May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on us and forgive us and not put us on isran, you know, a difficulty that becomes hard for us to solve and especially with what's happening with the protests around uh, America May uh, we have to, as Muslims, ask Allah for forgiveness because Maybe it was our fault. Maybe we Muslims, we have not done da'wah. We have lacked in so many areas that maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to put us in a test. And before anything, this is the most important thing that we have to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because there are more than 20 places today that are having protests against them. Right here in Washington, D.C., there will be about 3,000 people showing up protesting against Islam. And this might become a radical, you know, first it was the Tea Party. Now it might, Allah alam, but... May Allah not put us in a test that is difficult for us to bear. And so, I mean, I mean, Allah, I mean, may Allah forgive all of our sins, Muslims in America. 
Amin. Allahumma Amin. Inna Allah ya'mur. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad. Kama salli ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim. Inna kahmidun majid. Allahumma barik ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad. Kama barik ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim. Inna kahmidun majid. Amin. Inna Allah ya'mur. Min adli wal ihsan wa ita'izu al-qurba. Wa yalha an al-fahshai wal munkari wal baghi. Ya'idhukum la'allakum tadhakkarun. Uzkurullahi yazkukum. Fastajib lakum. Fa'aqibu al-salaam.